number 14 and here we will discuss in detail about to, uh, limit at infinity there are various perspective and then we will go to find few functions which which are having infinite limit and how to achieve such kind of things so these are very important and very specific kind of things you can simply say that it is one kind of improper limit you can say that so improper if there is a such kind of concept in uh, we know that uh, infinity is not a real number it's it is just a symbol talking about something very big and in negative infinity talking about something very small as small as possible you can see that so that concept is, concept is coming okay so coming to outline of today's lecture i would like to first discuss about one-sided limit because there are two kind of uh, infinity one is a uh, minus infinity and another one is plus infinity so if i talk about uh, neighborhood of infinity and if anyone would like to recall that what i had discussed about uh, neighborhood of limit so g here it is zero and this side you will go positive infinity and this side in left side you will go negative infinity tell me uh, how i had explained that uh, what is the meaning of uh, infinite neighborhood of infinity anyone so in place of epsilon we will take delta delta neighborhood of infinity so uh, actually uh, in uh, if you talk about uh, neighborhood of positive infinity then it is having just uh, left hand side in uh, neighborhood and what kind of point it contains this point, this you can say that this point would be 1 by delta okay and any x which falls uh, after 1 by delta will come in uh, what if it is uh, x is greater than 1 by delta it will imply that x belongs to neighborhood of positive infinity delta neighborhood of positive infinity you can say that i would like to write in a proper way okay so if you are taking any x which is uh, greater than 1 by delta it simply implies that x belongs to a neighborhood of positive infinity but here it would have the infinity uh, positive infinity would have only a left hand side neighborhood so we can put delta neighborhood of infinity so that is the concept and uh, equivalently we can express equivalently we can express same quantity we had already simplified this inequality we can express that uh, if x belongs to uh, delta neighborhood of infinity then 1 by x will belongs to uh, yeah delta neighborhood of zero but what kind of positive positive neighbor so i put it here right neighbor right neighborhood of zero so you need to right hand side only so of zero so that means here one by x will fall in this between zero to zero plus delta likewise if you take any x from <coughs> uh, delta neighborhood of uh, minus infinity then it simply says that x is less than minus 1 by delta it implies that x belongs to uh, delta neighborhood of negative infinity <coughs> so these things are very much geometrical in nature always try to come up with geometry in, with respect to real and perspective and if you try to see uh, uh, what does it mean so equivalently we can say it that 1 by x belongs to where where it will belong if x is from the delta neighborhood of infinite negative infinity where x will fall anyone it will fall delta neighborhood of 0 in left hand side so negative just put here negative sign. delta neighborhood of 0 so here this will come all 1 by x will if x is coming from <coughs> this uh, uh, this neighborhood neighborhood of minus infinity then 1 by x will fall left side left side of 0 in delta uh, within delta width 
okay that is the concept of uh, in understanding meaning of delta neighborhood and here uh, there are two kind of infinity so we need to know what are the approach to find one sided limit it is a, because infinity is having uh, one sided neighborhood it is not both sided neighborhood one sided that's why we will first discuss about one sided limit and then after we will discuss about limit at infinity then we will discuss about infinite limits that means value is approaching to infinity when x is approaching to some limit point so that concern this these are the part of today's lecture so coming to one sided limit and also i, I use I always used to say that whatever concept is there in localness always go through uh, that localness means uh, neighborhood concept when neighborhood concept is coming there then always go for sequential criteria so always here limit is dealing with local head, uh, and that small neighborhood concept always um, go with sequential criteria in order to compute the limit so it is really interesting so we will see that uh, one computational approach we can say that so what is happening that sometime a function f it may not have a limit at a point a, a if you focus just further then a limit does exist when the function is just uh, uh, restricted to an interval on one side of the limit point that means either right side or or left side so here we we are defining one sided limit that situation so if you are taking a point c it happens to be a limit point of a domain of the function domain of function or domain of definition what we call it so if uh, suppose the function is not having limit in a delta neighborhood of c that means what would you do? Uh, c delta neighborhood of c would be the interval c minus delta to c plus delta okay so if it is not having limit uh, in the in this uh, neighborhood then what we do we try to focus on uh, sidewise this one is uh, right side and this one is left side okay so uh, sidewise so here we, right side interval we call it right side <coughs> neighborhood we call we call it c2 c plus delta and left side neighborhood we call it c minus so one sided that's why one sided concept is coming here this one so we have to find limit in these two any of these two interval we have to look further we have to zoom it out okay so uh, approach would be from one side one sided approach so suppose we are having a real number c that happens to be a limit point of a set which is containing infinite interval kind of one kind of infinite interval okay and that means the right part of c right part of c so every real number after c a is containing every real number after c it is one kind of a continuum kind of set okay so this is the set further if you zoom it out and then we will say a real number l it would be a right hand limit of the function f at the point c and we denote it by limit x is approaching to c from right plus means from right x is approaching to c from right f of x equal to uh, l that right hand limit simply if you read it like this way right hand limit okay right hand limit you might have already gone through in plus two uh, so right hand limit we are defining so here you just remember here a is having a <coughs> interval kind of approach uh, must or it, 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 it is containing some uh, some kind of interval infinite interval as a subset okay so that concept so how we will define this right hand limit so again in the epsilon delta framework we will define it that suppose uh, we are having any given epsilon then with respect to this epsilon there would be a delta such that if we are taking any x after c within c plus delta interval so this if you try to convert this one so in the framework of interval then simply you can say that any x which falls between c and c plus delta okay c and c plus with delta this quantity uh, this inequality will say that x is greater than <coughs> x is greater than c 
okay uh, and one inequality and this inequality if you solve it will um, say that x is behind c plus delta c plus delta that's where we say that okay so we are having to include in combine you can write this in like interval of x if x is from a right hand right hand neighborhood of uh, right side neighborhood of c and if it is then it implies that uh, the function f is epsilon close to l epsilon here we are taking modulus it may be behind l it may be above l so epsilon close to l simply i in the epsilon neighborhood of l simply i say that epsilon neighbor so this this is the concept of uh, right hand side limit okay likewise we, we can define <coughs> left hand <coughs> side limit in the similar fashion okay or we denote that uh, if x is approaching to c from left minus is saying that <coughs> x is approaching <coughs> c from left what is meaning of uh, c minus or c plus anyone would like to hi uh, highlight what is meaning of uh, c plus anyone yeah it is saying that you approach uh, yeah then uh, yeah c plus simply say that uh, c plus something something positive quantity something positive or delta you can write like this to me delta uh, take delta we have already taken something something positive just to mention it's uh, c plus zero you can write it like c plus zero just you deviated a little bit uh, from c c plus c plus something very small quantity c plus zero and c minus it is saying that c minus zero that means you subtract it very small amount from c that is the meaning another way of uh, understanding c minus c plus what does it say so something you have subtracted from that is something that very close to zero you have subtracted from c that that is meaning of c minus okay so in le left hand limit how we define uh, we define that for again for k1 epsilon there exists a delta such that if you take any x from the left hand neighborhood that means c minus delta to c then it implies that f of x is within epsilon neighborhood of l within epsilon neighborhood so this uh, you can open up further so that means uh, further better we are very much familiar with interval concept so you can always convert in that uh, if you are willing to ex understand this one in more geometrical way then you can say that f of x belongs to uh, l minus epsilon and and l plus epsilon it, it belongs to this interval but you remember that this epsilon neighborhood falls in the vertical line and this neighborhood falls in the horizontal line that concept uh, i had already given picture of that during the definition of limit of a function so all these are definition of one sided limit so we will discuss uh, before going to discuss few more example i will discuss its sequential criteria how we sequentially find one sided limit of a function so that thing we will discuss so suppose we are having a subset of real number and a, a, for a function f which is defined from a to r l it would be right hand limit L would be right hand limit at point C if there is exist a sequence X n that means uh, if for every subsequence X n from the set E where we are putting condition over the sequence that every member of the sequence happens to be greater than limit point C that falls in the right side that means c would be here and x and all x and falls right side of right side of c so that's why it will help to come up with such kind of sequence if uh, if we come up with any sequence of points from the set a or from the domain of the definition domain of function such that every term of the sequence happens to be in the right side of c and uh, <coughs> it implies that the corresponding functional sequence is converging to some number that number l 
then we will say that l is a limit of right hand side limit of this function right so that is the sequential criteria remember that how we we are coming with this sequence we have to come up with a sequence of points from the domain of definition in such a way every term of the sequence falls in the right side of c right side of c such that the corresponding functional sequence have to converge to number l then we will say that f is having limit l and hence f is converging to l likewise also we can sequentially characterize left hand limit so how we will characterize left hand limit so we characterize like this way so if take any sequence from the domain of function and uh, we are taking in such a way that those term falls in left hand side of that domain of uh, uh, le left hand side of c left hand side of c and uh, um, x and uh, also converging to c but falls in left hand side of c every term of x and is falling left hand side of, of c and it implies that the corresponding functional sequence is going to converge to l then we say that left hand limit of that function is l so these two are sequential criteria so we will come up with one more non existence of limit so non existence would be like just you have to so if you are talking about non existence of right hand side limit so what you do uh, try to find a, just a single sequence at least one or two sequence or at least one would be there exist means at least one one either you go for one or two or three depends upon so come come up with uh, a sequence which is such that every terms of that sequence falls in right hand side of uh, that uh, c limit point c such that uh, it is converging to c but the corresponding functional sequence is not converging to uh, l or not converges in real number not converging to any real number in that case simply we say that right hand limit is also not defined there it is not existing right hand limit doesn't exist simply we see that it is about non existence of right hand limit likewise also you can define non existence of left hand limit as well so all these are the what we call it uh, theoretical basis through which we will try to get a computational example of various limit of a function one sided limit so i am taking one example like so here i am saying that we are having function e to the power 1 by x so we are saying that when x is approaching to 0 from left then limiting value is 0 but if x is approaching to 0 from right then limit doesn't exist even it is infinity infinite infinity that also i will discuss so it is infinity how we can justify it so I won't go again uh, as I mentioned if silent delta approach I will go for sequential approach so what do you do so here uh, here we are talking about uh, uh, limit uh, left hand limit it is what uh, left hand limit okay so left hand limit uh, in order to uh, sequentially characterize this one uh, sequentially establish this result what we have to come up with uh, we have to come up with sequences which are left side of zero so you can take a sequence such sequence like minus 1 by n you can easily see that minus 1 by n is less than 0 for n belongs to natural number so easily we can say that uh, uh, geometrically that uh, each term of this x n falls left hand side of 0 and uh, because we are willing to calculate first left, left hand limit that's way so here we can easily observe that x n is less than 0 and uh, if you try to talk about uh, limit of this sequence then definitely it is going to converge to zero so limit of this sequence is zero <coughs> that means zero. <coughs> zero is the limit point of the domain of this function now we are going to find limit of this function so uh, if suppose limit exists then uh, uh, convergence of this sequence will imply the convergence of corresponding functional sequence so we are having corresponding functional sequence f of xn so put xn equal to here in plus of x you put uh, minus 1 by n if you simplify then f of xn is what it is a sequence with nth term e to the power minus n and if you take limit as n tends to infinity where does it con converge it is converging to 0 0 so yeah very fine so that's why we can say that a limit of this function e to the power 1 by x is 
zero. Easily you can say that through sequential criteria, it is very easy to find. Even um, if you go for uh, epsilon delta, that would be complicated, but sequential criteria is very simple. So that's why I come up with that idea. And now, next, what you do? Uh, take uh, another sequence in right hand side in order to find uh, right hand limit of this function uh, <coughs> in the neighborhood <coughs> zero. So in right hand side of zero what you will observe you will have a sequence where one by n it would be greater than or zero every one by n would be greater than zero so if you are taking sequence xn equal to one by n the every term of the sequence falls in right hand side of zero so with respect to that we know that this sequence is going to converge to zero limit of this sequence is zero so that 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 one is very much familiar now let us see functional sequence so what does it happens so if you substitute uh, x by xn then what we will get we will get e to the power 1 by 1 by n so in finally you will get e to the power n so simply you can observe that if you take limit of this sequence functional sequence as n is approaching to infinity where does it converge it is not converging to any real number it is diverging to infinity so always we say that infinity is not a real number it is diverging to infinity so that's why we say that uh, limit of 1 by x when x is approaching to 0 from right doesn't exist actually it is diverging to infinity simply we say that so geometrically if you are willing to uh, plot the function uh, if you want to see the nature of the function you can easily see that if you are uh, this is the plot of the function so if you are approaching from uh, left to c you can see that function is approaching to 0 but if you are approaching from right to 0 then the corresponding function is diverging away to infinity <coughs> So that is the concept one-sided so one-sided limit concept is coming here it is not like that uh, it is very fine if, if you just restrict your domain up to here there would be no any issue and you can talk about existence of limit but if you talk about existence of limit in the a small level of zero it is not uh, working well just uh, it is working well if you take your infinite uh, domain minus infinity to zero <coughs> then <coughs> this function <coughs> will behave properly <coughs> <coughs> okay so that is the concept of one sided limit i will take another example so here we are taking another example 1 by e to the power 1 by x plus 1 if you try to find the limit of uh, if you try to find limit of this function when x is approaching to 0 it would be really difficult so that's why we are first finding left hand limit then we will find right hand limit so again we will go for sequential criteria okay so how we do that so we know we know that we are going to find limit uh, in the neighborhood at zero uh, okay so in the left neighborhood that means we have to take a sequence like uh, xn equal to minus 1 by n then you can see that minus 1 by n each term of the sequence falls in uh, left side of left side of zero okay so and also the sequence is converging to zero that limit of the sequence is zero so what we do we have to see the behavior of corresponding functional sequence so what would be corresponding functional sequence so in plus of x substitute it minus one by n and if you simplify what you will get you will get a um, functional sequence one by <coughs> e to the power minus n plus one and if you take a limit as n tends to infinity where does it converge it is converging to zero because this term will it it will it will convert to zero. So overall, this functional sequence will converge to one. So that you see. So that's why you can claim that left hand limit of this function is equal to one. Now, if you try to calculate right hand limit, so take a sequence at zero, then take a sequence where each term falls in right hand side of zero. Then here and such other also this sequence is converging to zero. Now we try to look for <coughs> corresponding functional sequence. So corresponding functional sequence is 1 by e to the power n plus 1. So again, where does it converge? It is converging to 0. So that's where we say that the right hand limit of this function is 0. So geometrically, if you are visualizing, you can visualize like this way. You can you see that in, if x is approaching from left to 0, then the corresponding function is converging to one but if x is approaching from right to zero the, then the corresponding function is converging to 
zero. So this is the geometrical visualization. So one-sided limit uh, is really interesting. And uh, if uh, uh, we will talk why even uh, it is not like that discontinuous function are highly uh, unsuitable. Sometimes it is suitable as well. So if jump, so it is what kind of discontinuity? So we haven't discussed continuity till now. In later uh, or next month, sorry, next week we will discuss uh, continuity and differential together, and then we will see that even jump disc discontinuity is also very nice. That we will see it. Uh, now, uh, once we have discussed already limit at uh, one sided limit, now we will discuss limit at infinity. This one is really interesting. That's why we come up with that idea of defining a one sided limit. <coughs> okay. So, we are taking a function trying to find limit at infinity and how we define it. So, we define it like this way. Suppose we are having a set which is containing infinite interval from a to infinity or c to infinity better we are trying to uh, find limit at c so c to infinity you can see that one sided part it is containing so a function if, which is defined from a to r it will have limit l at infinity remember that at infinity that we denote it by limit of f when x is approaching to infinity is approaching to l so in epsilon delta i will define what does it mean it says that for a given epsilon or for any given epsilon there exists delta such that if you are taking any any element from the epsilon neighborhood of delta that means x is greater than 1 by delta in the epsilon so that is the epsilon neighborhood till uh, infinity is what it says that x is greater than 1 by delta or it simply implies that x you are taking from uh, epsilon neighborhood of delta and uh, sorry delta neighborhood of infinity you are taking x is, you are taking from delta neighborhood of infinity so if you are taking any x which is greater than infinity that means uh, any x from the delta neighborhood of infinity then corresponding function value will fall in epsilon neighborhood of l <coughs> then we say that the function would have limit t at infinity so that is the concept okay so with uh, similar in similar way we can define a limit at negative infinity what does it say it says that um, for any epsilon there exists a delta such that if you are taking any element from uh, delta neighborhood of negative infinity that means x is less than minus 1 by delta equally you can say that x is coming from the delta neighborhood of negative infinity negative infinity so those things at the beginning of this lecture i had already explained so okay if you are taking any element from delta neighborhood of negative infinity then, then it implies that the corresponding Pascal value falls in epsilon neighborhood of L. Then we say that L is the limit of the function f at negative infinity. Now these are epsilon delta definition, but we don't like uh, generally in order to uh, go for uh, epsilon delta computation because it is very much theoretical. So we will go for sequential. So several times I had already discussed sequential. So here I am taking directly example. Sequentially you can come up with that idea that uh, i had discussed about uh, one sided limit so same concept i so suppose we are going to find limit of this function uh, a square root of, of x minus 5 divided by a square root of x plus 3 uh, when x is approaching to infinity okay and we are claiming that limit is equal to 1 so what does it say that so here you apply uh, we know that uh, x, if x in uh, delta neighborhood of uh, infinity it implies that 1 by x in del what x if x is greater than 1 by delta what does it means it simply says that x is in the delta neighborhood of infinity so equal equally you can say that uh, you say that 1 by x fall in delta neighborhood of 0 
So same concept uh, we are applying. It is saying that 1 by x falls in the <coughs> right hand side neighborhood of 0. So that is generally we denote it by <coughs> 0 to delta. Okay. So and likewise for negative infinity as well. So that's where what we do. This limit will be converted into x is approaching 0 from right because when x is in the delta neighborhood of infinity then 1 by x will be in the right hand level neighborhood of 0 so that's where this limit will be converted into this limit with transformation that x you are transforming to 1 by x so due to that uh, you got this transformation so this limit is easy to find because infinity is really big one we we never convenient with respect to infinity so always we try to convert like this way uh, through the concept of this through this concept okay so here we we are uh, trying to find limit of this one so we come up with a uh, sequence having terms after zero so every term are after zero here you can see that every term one by n are after zero and we know that one by n is approaching to zero that means limit of the sequence zero then uh, we will see the limit of corresponding functional sequence so, so what is f of x n here if you simplify f of x n is 1 minus 5 by square root of n divided by 1 plus 3 by <coughs> square root of n and when you take limit of this functional sequence when n is approaching to infinity it will approach to 1 that's why we say that limit of this function is equal to 1 so the little bit indirect approach but very much practical uh, you are able to compute the limit of the function at infinity through this journey so that's very really interesting always you do that conversion i will take another example okay any question here till now you have to play such kind of transformation am i audible yeah so <laughs> Yeah, I'm coming with similar kind of example again. Uh, more uh, so again, you will see like this way. This example I'm taking it. I'm saying that limit of this function is uh, actually actually there is you no know, backward option in this uh, PowerPoint when I'm going for full screen. There is you no know, backward option. So that's where I'm able to just revisit again that example. So but you will see in the recorded part of this lecture. Okay. So uh, uh, what what is happening here? Here you can see that we are taking this is the function <coughs> we are finding the limit of this function when x is approaching to infinity. So again, uh, I would like to say that uh, what is the we have to deal with uh, uh, delta neighborhood of uh, in infinity. That means x is greater than one by delta. It implies that x belongs to uh, delta neighborhood of infinity. Okay delta neighborhood of in, in, infinity so everyone is familiar with uh, what we call it uh, interval approach so you can say that in the framework uh, interval what would be this it is interval from 1 by delta to infinity 1 by right hand left hand limit of infinity okay so it is simply implied that 1 by x belongs to right hand limit of 0 <coughs> that means the open interval 0 to delta that is the concept <coughs> so that's why we will transform the function again here through the transformation x to 1 by x okay are you getting it here everyone we are applying the term you are replacing x by 1 by x so yeah yeah from that perspective what will happen so this function where it will transform it will transform to a square root of x plus x square are you getting that transformation <coughs> if someone is not getting you can see it like us yeah very fine and one person may ask a question here a function is involved a square root x plus one so this a square it is defined for only 
non negative real number that means when x is greater than equal to minus 1 then this square root will be defined again why we are simplifying it like this way because we are dealing in the uh, what delta neighbor to infinity and infinity if you talk about delta neighbor to infinity there x would be very very far away from minus 1 so there would be no issue so that's way uh, square root of x plus 1 divided by x you can write it like this way you can bring uh, x by taking a square inside the square root why because you are dealing with delta neighborhood of infinity you are dealing with uh, interval 1 by delta to infinity so that's where so this this one is feasible so further simplify it so if you simplify then uh, what would be this 1 by x plus 1 by x square and we applied the transformation x to 1 by x square that's where we are having function 1 by x uh, if you are applying tra that transformation through transformation x to 1 by x the corresponding function will be treated as x plus x square don't confuse with same notation if so, uh, someone is confused with this notation you can write it uh, y you can take it to y notation x to 1 by y there would be no issue in that case uh, things would be term of y and later you will all all these are dummy variable later you can come up come come back to x notation x is very much for uh, independent variable so that's where we are coming with that so that's where we are saying and remember that here x is approaching to infinity is equivalent to x is approaching to zero from right so that's where limit will be also trans limit is also transformed to like this way through this uh, reasoning okay call it reasoning one and this one is reasoning two regarding the function okay so if you try to see that uh, if you are willing to find limit of this uh, function through when x at infinity it is equivalent to find limit of the transform function at uh, right hand uh, <coughs> at uh, zero that we are willing to find so this approach we can uh, easily find it so how we can find it this one so we can find like this way so take a sequence which is what uh, which is in right hand side of 0 so that sequence we are taking it 1 by n here if you are taking sequence xn equal to 1 by n then every xn falls right hand side of 0 and xn is approaching to 0 that is limit of the sequence is 0 so we will look for <coughs> corresponding functional sequence so uh, in uh, fun in this function in place of x we will take uh, xn so if you substitute xn in this function what we will get we are getting a square root of 1 by n plus 1 by n square if you talk about this functional sequence where does it convert it, it is converging to 0 when it, n is approaching to infinity so simply we can say that 0 is the limit of this function and has this function everything is clear till now any question or any doubt yeah yeah here sequential is very interesting in order to compute the limit of a function sequential criteria and criteria. if it, it exists then it is very much a, what we call it interesting always it will able to find now next we are trying to find <coughs> a limit of this function a square root of x minus x divided by a square root of x plus x when x is approaching to infinity so again we apply the same reasoning we are transforming x to 1 by x in that process this function will be transformed to this function will be transformed to a square root of x minus 1 divided by a square root of x plus 1 and this limit concept will x is approaching to infinity will be transformed to x is approaching to 0 from right and just we have to find the limit of this function through sequential characterization and we will see that that would be the also limit of the original function so here uh, here we are dealing with the right hand limit so we come up with a sequence 1 by n that one is converging to 0 and every term falls in right hand side of 0 and we will see the nature of corresponding functional sequence so this would be functional sequence if you substitute x by 
uh, action then you are getting this functional sequence so easily you can see that when n is approached to infinity where does it converge it converge to minus one so we can say that minus one is the limit of this function when x is approaching to zero from right and hence uh, minus one is the limit of this function when x is approaching to infinity so that is the approach okay now next we will discuss about infinite limit just few more concepts are there so infinite limit is also very interesting <coughs> so it is like this way uh, also we will talk about sequential characterization as well so suppose we are having a subset of real number and c happens to be a limit point of a okay then a function f which is defined from a to r it will have infinite limit at point c or in the small neighborhood of c and that we denoted by limit x is approaching c of f equal to infinity that that is the notation if for every epsilon there exists a delta such that if we take any x from delta neighborhood of c from that means from c minus delta to c plus delta excluding this one is talking about exclude this one is talking about x is not equal to c and, and this infinity is talking about this there are two infinity so that's uh, we have to remember both the infinity if you are taking <coughs> any x from this uh, uh, interval c minus delta to c plus delta and it implies that f is 1 by epsilon uh, uh, for if, uh, oh, f is f of x is greater than 1 by epsilon so in vertical line you observe that so here uh, you observe that if you are taking epsilon so again in vertical line we try to see infinity neighborhood of infinity so f, f, f of x falls here if f of x is any x what we are taking from the delta neighborhood of c okay then corresponding if you take any x whether from right or left it depends upon your choice corresponding f of x falls away from 1 by epsilon that means in the uh, infinity neighborhood of in the infinite delta delta neighborhood of infinity in the delta neighborhood of infinity then we say that the function is having infinite limit at c that is the concept okay likewise also we can define negative infinite limit what does it mean that means f of x will fall in a negative neighborhood of delta neighborhood of negative infinity so same in the same framework we are defining if you are taking x from uh, delta neighborhood of c excluding c itself then corresponding f it implies corresponding f of x falls <coughs> here it would be so mirror image like take it so minus infinity in the vertical line it would be like this way so here this would be minus 1 by epsilon so if you are taking any x from here this one is c and this one is c plus delta and this one is c minus delta uh, take any x from this neighborhood excluding f itself then corresponding f of x falls in this uh, del epsilon neighborhood of <coughs> negative infinity epsilon neighborhood is coming not delta okay so that is the concept of infinite limit so again uh, we need to go for sequential characterization of all these so what does it mean sequential characterization so i'm uh, writing this sequential characterization in a very combined form okay so we are writing like this way take uh, any sequence of points from the domain of function or domain differential that one is converting to c and each term is other than the limit point c itself <coughs> then uh, it implies that the corresponding functional sequence is either diverging to 
plus infinity or minus infinity if the corresponding functional sequence is diverging to plus infinity then we say that uh, the corresponding function is having uh, positive infinity or infinite limit and if uh, uh, the corresponding functional sequence is diverging to minus infinity then we say that the corresponding function is having negative infinity as a limit okay so that thing we will see it here so i am taking few example first if you take a function 1 by x square then <coughs> we are claiming that a limit of this function is when x is approaching to 0 limit of this function is equal to infinity so how we can uh, find it so we can find in uh, just uh, go for left hand side limit also left, uh, right hand side limit also we will go for that so if you are going for left hand side limit then we see that if xn equal to minus 1 by n and then this sequence is converging to 0 further if you try to see the corresponding functional sequence what would be if you substitute x by xn then and simplify then f of xn would be n square it is a sequence and when n is approaching to infinity where does it approach it is approaching to infinity so that's why uh, if you take any sequence from left hand side of zero corresponding to that the corresponding functional sequence is converging to infinity okay likewise also if you take any sequence from right hand side of zero then again we are getting functional sequence which is also converging to infinity so we can say that if you are trying to find limit of this function at zero limit of this function is infinity from the both side and plot if you are willing to say plot of 1 by x square is like this way okay just one more example after that we will wind up today's lecture <coughs> so another uh, if you are taking function 1 by x and you are taking limit from uh, right left of 0 then if you are taking limit from left of 0 then 1 by x will approach to minus infinity but if you are taking limit to, from right of 0 then 1 by x will approach to plus infinity so here one sided approach we observe here so that's why we had already discussed that there would be no issue so again if you are approaching x from left <coughs> side of 0 so you come up <coughs> with a sequence minus 1 by n you can easily see that every term of the sequence falls in left side of 0 then what would be the corresponding fun um, corresponding functional sequence it would be minus n and when n is approaching to infinity minus n will approach to minus infinity so that's where left hand limit of this function 1 by x is minus infinity now we are coming to find right hand limit of this function when x is approaching to 0 from right so take a sequence 1 by n then every term falls in right hand side of 0 and limit of this sequence is 0 so further if you see the functional sequence it happens to be equal to n f of xn is equal to n and it is approaching to infinity when n is approaching to infinity so that's where we claim that the right hand uh, we come to conclude that right hand limit of function 1 by x is positive infinity and the plot is like this way you can easily see that when x is approaching to 0 from left you can see that function is going to approach to negative infinity but when x is approaching to 0 from right function is going to approach to positive infinity so these sequential criteria are really interesting so uh, other concept i think uh, everything about limit of a function is already over 